Greetings viewers, voyeurs who have got that funk. I hope you're doing well. Last week I went into a little bit of a fit because I found out about this People app. And I did a video about it called The People vs. People where I discussed my concerns with the concept of the app. I'll link it in the description box below in the rare event that you haven't seen it. And it would be even more unlikely if you've never heard of this app because the entire internet lit itself on fire in protest at the concept of this app. But just in case you're unaware, I'll give you the bullet points. Um, basically, the app was a, uh, it's called People, P-E-E-P-L-E, -E -E, and its purpose was for members to get on there and rate people that they knew in their lives on an either personal, professional, or romantic basis. One star to five stars. Five stars obviously being a good rating, one star being a poor rating. And the problem with the app isn't just the dehumanizing effect that it can have to have your entire personality reduced to a star rating. That's a problem, but you know, if people sign up for it themselves and put themselves up for that kind of abuse, I really couldn't see why I should object to it, but that wasn't why I was objecting to it. Well, at least not the only reason. It was, it, that's the most minor of all the reasons that I objected to it. My main objection to the app was the fact that uh, as it was originally conceived, people could create a profile for someone else without their knowledge or consent. As long as you had someone's phone number, you could create a profile for them and put them on the app. And the only way they could see what you wrote about them, even if it was good, would be for them to sign on to the app themselves. And in doing so, uh, basically confirm to the people who run the app that the phone number that was given was your correct phone number and that you are that same person, etc., etc. It was an insidious way to sort of grow the app. And I think that was unethical, straight up. I also think it's unethical to be able to put someone on a social media platform at all without their knowledge or consent. And for uh, an app to encourage that as part of its business model, uh, to me, it was just so unethical. Um, now they're saying that uh, it will be impossible for people to create a profile on someone else's behalf. Impossible is a pretty strong word uh, to use on the internet. And the only way that I can see them being able to do that, they're saying it's going to be 100% opt-in, only people who choose to put themselves up to be rated will be rated on the app and so forth. If that's true, um, fine, but the only way that I can see that they can ensure that to be the case is if they take credit card details, even though the app is free. I would say that they would have to take credit card details off of uh, everybody who signs on to the app so that they can check the name on the card with the name of the account being created. Because if they don't do that, if it's free to sign on, there's absolutely no safeguard to stop someone from creating a false account in someone else's name. So even though they're saying it's going to be 100% opt-in, show me the money. Where's the beef? Uh, I'm going to reserve judgment until I see how the app operates. But at the end of the day, if they're not putting in some kind of safeguard to uh, confirm someone's identity, the same problems still exist. So, But let's just give them the benefit of the doubt and let's just say they've got sufficient safeguards so where they can check that the person who is signing on to be rated is in fact the person that uh, they say they are. Okay, um, their second safeguard and where they say they've listened to the concerns of the internet is that uh, you can review any recommendations about you before they get posted whereas once upon a time the original concept was a three, four, or five star rating would go live on the app straight away, and a one or two star rating would uh, go into your personal inbox, at which time you could try to work it out with the person who gave you the low rating and see if you could improve your rating. But either way, low or high, you could not remove your rating. That was the original vision. Now they're saying uh, your ratings won't even go live until you've had a chance to review them. That's an improvement, but it still doesn't uh, solve certain problems. For example, if someone wants to take a bash at you, and uh, you know they decide to give you a rating on this app. It'll go into your inbox for you to, for you to approve it. And let's just say you think it's a it's a nasty nasty rating or a nasty comment with the rating. So you decide not to improve it, approve it. Well, that's all very well as far as what the internet will see. But the fact is that maybe the person who sent that message in the first place just wanted to stick the knife in and twist it a little bit for you. And the fact that you've had to read that 
basically it's, it's basically a platform for people to be aggressive towards one another privately on the internet um, we already have plenty of platforms for that you know Facebook is quite sufficient for that thank you very much and uh, you know any private message uh, service will have the same function but let's again give them the benefit of the doubt and say that uh, you know people will be using this to rate one another in an honest and straightforward way uh, using their integrity and honor let's give them the benefit of that doubt the third improvement that they uh, say they're making is that you can take yourself off the platform at any time for any reason that in my opinion is a fundamental necessity no website should be able to keep you on its platform against your wishes if you want to come off Facebook you can come off Facebook at least as far as the world can see you can come off Facebook you can't you can deactivate your account on Facebook but they'll still keep it cached for their own purposes it just won't be viewable to the public I don't know if that's going to be the same with this app or not but basically they're saying that uh, you know you can come off if you want to whereas previously the concept was once you're on the app your presence is there for the duration and you couldn't take yourself off whether you had good ratings or bad ratings so I'm going to reserve judgment until this app actually has a chance to circulate as to whether or not it's as evil as I think it is either way I think there's still an awful lot of work to do to make it safe to use and uh, and to ensure that people aren't creating false accounts on other people's behalf and so on I still think the same thing I thought before which is it is intrinsically dehumanizing to have your personality your character your integrity reduced to a star rating but if people choose to sign themselves up for it and want to take that kind of uh, criticism constructive or otherwise that's their prerogative I can't really complain about what other people decide to do with their own self-image I would just remark that uh, you know if you need that kind of validation from other people you've got issues that are way bigger than anything an app can solve uh, that's just my personal opinion and uh, I can guarantee you I will not be signing up for this app under any circumstances and I would strongly suggest that you don't either um, because once they've got you on their platform you don't necessarily know what changes they might make to the platform as it evolves over the coming years I mean Facebook has changed an awful lot since I first signed on eight years ago so is YouTube for that matter and uh, therefore you do have to keep in mind that uh, things aren't always going to be the way they start out to be and I think that's an important thing to uh, remember the founder for the app uh, Julia Cordray is there's no polite way to put it she's a manipulative lying sack of shit is what she is and um, I don't believe her any further than I could throw her I am happy to reserve judgment until the app comes out but she's already proven to be as dishonest as any politician you can think of she seems to think that she can just change her story and everyone will buy the new story and forget the old story sorry Julia the internet never forgets and some of us were paying enough attention to download some of your lies because we knew you were going to remove them from the platforms they were on I'm one of those people and if it turns out that uh, you're lying again I'm gonna be one of those people shouting from the rooftops just like everybody was a week or so ago finally I just want to say you know I think we all find a uh, internet lynch mobs to be distasteful and they're certainly potentially damaging for the people who are on the receiving end of such attention however I would point out that in this case it was a necessary reaction to a very 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 bad idea and it is an example I think of how people can constructively rise up and use their voices that their own social media platforms provide and basically stop something bad from happening or maybe if we haven't prevented it from happening completely we've at least made it not as bad as it was going to be so in this sense I think that we shouldn't uh, necessarily write off the idea that um, you know the storm of, a, of, a, of an internet uh, phenomenon is always a bad idea it's always a bad thing 
And it's also encouraging to think that, uh, you know, if we could raise this much fuss and actually get some change about an app, the Internet's potential for social change is still virtually untapped. And maybe that's something that we could work on improving. I'm not sure. I'd like to think so. I want to thank you for watching this video. I look forward to hearing what you've got to say in the comments section below. I probably have one or two more videos coming out over the weekend, so look out for that. And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.